Welcome to the LDC report out. Remember to keep your mics off until the end, but you may put a question in the chat box. For a heads up, this session is being recorded. You just watched a video of a song called Neados de Cuentos that was created in 2019. This song talks about, which is in a, this song talks about how families should remember the values acquired in their home countries and to share those values. This is an important part for the development of the better community we are trying to create. During this presentation, you will hear about the leadership cohort, who we are, what we do, and the impact of our work in the community. 
You will also hear from a community member that works alongside cohort members to develop our projects. You will also learn about our plans are for next year and if you are interested, how to join. To start us off, I would like to welcome a cohort member, Idami Rivera. Thank you, Fabiola. So like Fabiola said, my name is Idami Rivera. I joined in 2018 um, and it's been an awesome experience. So to start describing what Barrio Alegria's leadership development cohort is, I'll start with our mission. Um, which is to provide a space for community members to acquire and strengthen their leadership skills so that they can use it in the in the community to do good in the world or community. Um, so the members work on acquiring their skills in, through the events that the cohort uh, presents to the community. And what each project does essentially is two main things. It gives the members the opportunity to actively practice these skills that they're trying to acquire and in some way help the community. The cohort also provides, promotes and strengthens uh, a, couple, a number of things, professional development, soft skills, pre presenting skills, uh, teamwork and collaboration, the development of emotional intelligence, provides mentorships, networking opportunities, and financial literacy. Um, to share a little bit about my experience in this cohort, it's been a very um, interesting journey for me. I'm happy and grateful to be part of this group for several reasons. I came in seeking to be able to adapt to different environments, like whether that's to be a helper, a leader, and, or an organizer. And I also came in as an overthinker. Right, and not really being able to manage that trait. And being part of this group has definitely aided me to use that trait to my advantage. Like I see where it works and where it doesn't um, by being in these different events and, and practicing it, which I'm very grateful for. I feel a little bit more in touch with that um, trait. Um, this cohort also has also provided the networking opportunity. So I've met so many people, connected to so many people, and so many um, opportunities, um, cool events that I've been able to take part in throughout the community, and which I'm most definitely grateful for. So that's my experience, and I'm happy uh, about it. And now we can hear about more of uh, what the what the leadership cohort is about, a little bit more specifically from Luis Pineda. Hi there. My name is Luis Pineda, and um, I'm one of the newer um, bar uh, Barrio Leadership Cohort members. I uh, just joined this year, um, my girlfriend, Kaylee. Um, she gave me a little bit of insight of what uh, what the cohort's all about. And um, I've been living here most of my life. And um, I, same thing, I guess I always wanted to do, I wanted to do, join at something that has um, potential to uh, bring change. And I felt like this cohort was one of the few places that um, that was welcoming enough to kind of get you started on, on just get on getting you the information out to you. Like, um, my involvement here has been short, but um, it has, I have done a few things um, that have given me a little bit more confidence in myself in getting anything, um, some change moving, especially in our city. Um, I'm here to pr present to you what the leadership cohort does a little bit more um, uh, with more detail. Uh, Barrios leadership cohort um, focuses on civic and communi uh, community engagement, particularly with young people. Um, it provides various opportunities for them to develop and learn new leadership skills. The cohort, just like Barrio, utilizes different art forms to engage with the community with, purpose, with the purpose of creating transformational moments that can scale up to change um, the world. Barrio offers cohort members a new lens that they are accustomed to in order to see beauty and hope within their community. Cohort members sign up for a year during which they work independently and collaborate on a community project as well as personal development, development activities. 
Um, every year, the cohort chooses an overarching theme. And in 2019, the theme was literacy. Um, and at the end of 2020, members invested their personal time and talent to share and plan and organize projects that focus on storytelling. These projects aim to shine a light on Reading's own beauty and the potential of its own residents. At the beginning of the year, cohort members agreed that rather than assigning projects to members, uh, we focus on independent projects in order to be able to measure our own success. Um, however, with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, it threw a wrench into uh, a lot of our plans and slowed down some of our process, a uh, progress, I'm sorry. And, um, but a lot of our cohort members were able to adapt to the new, um, to the new uh, online world that we're living. And we're able to get some of the programs to, uh, to be able to connect to people more through online and virtually. <coughs> Being able to stay connected um, definitely allowed us to rejoice that it's a safe, safe place that we shared as um, Idami was mentioning. And we learn from one another uh, to find resilience through, a new through the new circumstance, circumstances that we face. And um, I wanted to mention just a little brief overview of some of the projects that we worked on. Um, Idami, um, for example, she did our Uncovering Stories, which was meant to give an outlet for immigrants to share their stories with the community. Another project we had was Ashley, uh, uh, started by Ashley Mercado which was uh, a mural project, mostly to bring, um, create a mural for the community in hopes of having it culturally identifying them. Nadine um, did a storytelling project uh, where she cr uh, created a culture book of local residents of stories that can serve as a, re a resource for parent and children con uh, conversations. And um, Anthony Orozco is another, um, cohort member. He worked on the Penn Street project where he worked on sharing the beauty and work of local uh, poets. Um, Kaylee Carpentero uh, worked for eviction and she also worked on some of the uh, front page stories along with Nancy. Uh, Kaylee worked on um, engaging and canvassing um, with uh, some of the local residents to help them uh, learn about the eviction pro prevention program and also work um, on writing stories for Reading's own artists. Nancy, as I mentioned, she worked along with Kaylee, working with some of the front, stage, front page stories, where she also helped document some of the Reading, Reading residents' stories. And Nancy also worked on one of the children's books um, and talking about her childhood experiences. I myself personally worked on the library project, which was uh, we set on the goal to promote some of the resources that were available from our own Reading Public Library. And then um, that's most of the projects that we have going on, but we also do have our, our um, lovely organizer, Fabiola, which kind of helped us all um, stay in track and helped us um, get organized from her end uh, as much as she could. Um, and then although, although some of the members were working on unique projects, we all, feel a sense of personal success in being able to, to participate in an organization that welcomes our voices and thoughts on changes that we would love to see in our community. Um, so that's brief overview on what we're, um, we were set out to do, or, or I guess a little, um, uh, sorry, a little bit of um, a briefing on something that we like, we want to get start, we want to do and get started. And um, I will now transfer over uh, this presentation over to Anthony Orozco, where he will talk about the impact of the cohort in the community. Hello, everybody. Uh, so I want to give you just some stats first. Uh, the overall stats is that we've had 13 programs uh, that were in development, uh, planned out, organized, nine of which were completed this year, 124 events that happened both online and in person. And in those events, uh, we had a cumulative 760 attendees. Um, and our virtual events also had an accumulated 4,320 views, approximately 1,220 volunteer hours went into all of those programs. And 
that's the quantitative side of this, but I want to give you some more qualitative information about our projects. And there's some common threads that run through all of our projects. And those are empowering the community through the arts, through developing skills, amplifying voices of people in our community. And you'll see that through various projects like uh, the poetry projects I've done, the story projects that Idami has done. Kaylee has told stories of people in our community and also validating the experiences, the lived experiences and uh, truths that people have within them. Um, so there were three projects that I was a part of, and I'm gonna share those with you because I know I have an idea of the community impact a little bit better because I was closer to those. And that was uh, a poetry workshop that began in 2008. Um, it was something that I didn't know was even an option for me. I didn't know that there was a need or a want for a space in which poets could come and not present their work, but to actually work on their craft. And really what that became was a space that fostered community more than just a place where we could share our work and give each other's tips, but all of us became teachers and all of us became students and each of our voices were equal. And we got to uh, dive deeper, not only into the art, but also into ourselves to wrestle with trauma and to create something beautiful out of, you know, the intense feelings that we have, whether that be painful or, or joy. And then, in, because I focus in poetry, uh, something else that arose in the following year in the summer was uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. There's always a lot of events that happen in this uh, area. We have a very um, a present Latino population here in Reading and in Berks. And there's always presentations at universities and schools and in downtown Reading. And I saw an opportunity to bring somebody from the island of Puerto Rico to come to this area, which has such a tie, such a connection to the island, to share his art, his uh, spoken word poetry, his performance, and his literature. Uh, he had just written a book about what life was like on the island post Maria, when the infrastructure was obliterated and people were relying on each other. And these are stories and poetry and verse that connected with, with an integral part of our Latino community here. And he not only got to earn, um, you know, a little bit of a living for the two weeks that he was here, he got to take something back to the island for his family. But I think people here took something from his visit. It was a validation of their lived experience of the pain that they had um, shared with their relatives, with people they knew on the island. And, um, in the past year, another project came around, and this was a state funded grant. Now, I wouldn't have been prepared to lead the state funded grant if I hadn't done the workshop and brought a bell here. I, through those two uh, projects, I really began to believe in myself as a leader. And so I undertook the Penn Street uh, City of Poems anthology project, and that's Penn Street as in pen writing utensil, that wasn't a typo. And uh, in that, we collected uh, poems of about 70 poets and uh, created an anthology of around 100 poems. All of them are odes um, dedicated to the city of Reading. And these poets included people who haven't graduated high school, uh, college professors, uh, mechanics, hip hop dudes, uh, just a, a whole wide range of people that you meet in Reading who have a love for this art and this craft. And so we published that online. Um, it was due for National Poetry Month, which was April. And if you guys remember, in April, we were all spinning, trying to figure out which way was up. And so we did a virtual release instead of a physical release. And then there are some parts that go with that that aren't just in the anthology. Um, we also held virtual events, readings, 
and workshops. So we gave opportunities for these poets to become leaders themselves and to share how they approach their art, how they, uh, uh, how they wrestle with the inner workings of poetry and emotion and uh, expressing it to a group of people. And then another part of that was we actually took um, sections of the poems. There is an example up here uh, off to the left. And um, so we made posters. These are high um, durability uh, banner type material that had suction cups in them. And we put them into windows up along Penn Street and other downtown businesses that faced outwards. And what this did was this showed the community that there are artists, extremely talented artists within your midst. And uh, originally when people were coming up with ideas for this, they wanted to use Walt Whitman, uh, Wallace Stevens, uh, Robert Frost, these people who are no longer with us, who are not in our community and don't really reflect the contemporary voice of our community. And instead we used living, breathing artists who are your neighbors and uh, showed that we have talent right here in Reading. And um, so those were the three projects that I tackled. And really, I wouldn't have been able to do that if it weren't for first being pushed to do the workshop. And I didn't believe I was a leader. I didn't know I even had those talents. But because I had Barrio Alegria behind me, and encouraging me, I was able to find my own leader within myself. And with that, I want to pass it over to Nancy Maroshot to speak a little bit about the individual impact of the LDC. Thank you, Anthony. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Nancy. Um, I'm just going to start out by telling you a little bit about my story. Um, when I think about um, moments in my life that bring impact, I can't help but contemplate on why they hold such power. I have to consider what changed in my life um, to allow these moments to be remarkable. I have to consider my past experiences and be mindful of my past traumas. I reflect on the change I feel. The leadership development cohort is the reason there was a shift in me. And here's why. Through previous experiences, I have been conditioned to make myself small and blend in. My voice has been silenced many times and my confidence relied on others' validation. It was January 2020. I was working at a restaurant when I first heard about Barrio Alegria the leadership co and the leadership cohort. I was feeling frustrated at the time because I was working four jobs and not feeling fulfilled in any of them. I had graduated from Kutztown University spring 2019 with a bachelor's in elementary education. Due to the state law, I was unable to secure a teaching position that upcoming school year. My certification could not be processed or obtained because of my immigration status. I am a DACA dreamer. Um, I had worked really hard to put myself through school and get certified to teach. I was distraught when I found the news and the lack of information that got me to that realization. I can't practice my profession and I felt like it was my fault. I buried myself in work trying to prove to myself, the state, the universe, or anyone that I was enough. Um, that is when I started to say yes to every work opportunity that came up. I felt that I had to take every chance I got because there was so little that I could do. After graduation, I kept my restaurant job. I began to work at a preschool um, and after school care and I started to nanny on my free time. Although I enjoyed some of the work, I needed to change, um, something needed to change. If I couldn't teach, then I wanted to learn. I was always going to go back to school, so I told myself, why not now? Um, I started to research higher education options and explore my passions. I love being creative and making art. 
I wanted to refocus my energy on myself and my art. During that January evening, um, I revealed my frustrations to Kaylee, a leadership development cohort member. She told me that she had previously collaborated with Barrio Alegria. Um, as I was listening to her talk about the projects and environment she was surrounded by, I knew I needed to surround myself with Barrio. Kaylee invited me to a leadership cohort meeting. She reassured me that there would be other participants there and that I could sit back and just observe. Um, that took some of the pressure off. I didn't feel like I had to perform. Um, I could start over and be my authentic self. I was nervous to attend because I didn't know anyone, um, but I did go and I sat back and observed all the interactions. The em environment was accepting, welcoming, respectful. The expectations were honest, realistic. I felt like I could trust these individuals that I had just met. I finally didn't feel silenced. It's hard to pinpoint the exact moment as to when the leadership cohort has helped me. The impact was not immediate, but the first meeting knocked the first domino that set the transformation in motion. I started to become more confident in speaking up. With the leadership cohort, I have experienced what a healthy work environment should look like. I know I can fail and learn here. I know I can succeed and be appreciated here. Uh, this is attributed to the empathy, tolerance, compassion, and self-awareness the group maintains. These traits hold power and are the reason that there was a change in me. This experience has helped me feel safe to share my thoughts and ideas. Most importantly, the leadership development cohort has helped me come home to myself. Um, and I just want to say that there is a lot of internal work that I still have to do, but with um, Barrio Alegria and the leadership cohort, um, with their support, it has made it a lot easier. Um, so I just want to thank them. Um, and here to tell us more about his community experience is Xavier. Thanks so much. I appreciate you so much. Um, I, hi, uh, uh, my name is Xavier Kerr. Um, I'm from Reading, Pennsylvania as well. I was born and raised here and I've lived there for uh, 23 years. So I want to tell you a little bit about my experience uh, being a community member um, who came across Barrio and had the awesome experience of getting involved in, in multiple spaces. Um, so uh, I owe a lot of the credit of me being in a lot of these spaces to Anthony Orozco, um, having seen his his word getting spread so widely, um, friends sharing, and um, and him posting and keeping up uh, the word consistently, uh, so that I had the chance to be involved with the Penn Street Project. I'm so grateful to have my poem included in his anthology, along with the, the awesome works of so many other poem, uh, poets uh, of our community. And uh, I continued uh, being part of Anthony's uh, longer uh, poetry workshop. That was an amazing space. I am so grateful to, for, for that one especially. I think uh, one of the things that I reflect on uh, really regularly um, is now that we're in these times of uh, loneliness and um, exclusion, uh, that poetry workshop was for me then uh, a awesome space where so many different uh, poets all got together, sat at this <laughs> really uh, long table, and we had the chance to look straight across from each other. We had the chance to uh, share our poetry and, um, and really reflect on the things that we were creating. And uh, I really loved the things that Anthony brought to that table every single week. And, um, and every, everybody else that came to those, those workshops brought their honest selves. And um, for, for, for me, as someone who struggles with ADHD and only having found that out as an adult, I, I know that in that space, uh, one of the things that I loved was the, the moments when we stopped uh, uh, our awesome conversations and we just stopped and 
dug deep into our work. Um, we all had an awesome like like work share and uh, wrote some new poems. And I think during those times when uh, I could see the people around me focused, everybody was dedicated on what they were doing. I was able to focus and um, I created some of my, what I believe is absolutely my, my favorite pieces of, uh, of art uh, in those spaces, in those rooms with our community members. And um, uh, after, uh, after the, the workshops ended, uh, I continued being involved, going to many of the open mics. Um, one of mine, uh, one of mine were the favorite, one of my, one of my favorite open mics was uh, Valentine's Day. I made a lot of new friends that day and I, I brought my dad in. Um, and after he, him having heard my poems, he uh, opened up and shared some poetry that I had never even knew uh, that he had, <laughs> he had written. And um, I had the awesome chance of being highlighted on uh, the Penn Street Anthology Instagram. Um, and I had the awesome chance to get paid to perform uh, for uh, uh, an, an online event. And um, one of the, the most awesome things I'm really, really proud of, if you had seen it uh, when it happened, um, you would have seen my eyes light up. Uh, a great friend of mine uh, saw me perform and um, saw my poem in the Penn Street uh, Anthology book. And uh, after he read my poem about Mother Earth, it inspired him uh, to create an awesome uh, visual uh, painting, <laughs> an awesome uh, piece of art that, uh, that still stands today. At, I wanna say, I wanna say four feet, four, four feet tall. And when I saw it, it blew my mind, I freaked out. And um, it wouldn't have happened if there weren't so many intersections of awesome people connecting and creating art. Um, and um, I think before I close, I just wanna reflect um, and say uh, that I, I really believe that uh, art is creation, it's healing, it's growth, it's closure, clarity, uh, connection. And uh, everybody that's been speaking today is an awesome person um, who has grown so much from Barrio. And I'm so grateful to be part of this community. And I really hope to see this thrive and thrive and thrive so that many more people can prosper from the work that we and you are all doing. So thank you again. Um, I'm not sure I'm gonna pass it off next to, but uh, are you ready to go? Yes, that's me. Got it. All right. Um, thank you, Xavier, uh, for talking about your experience. Um, my name is Kaylee Carpintero. I'm one of the leadership cohort members. Um, I've only been involved to, with this cohort for I think about a year. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience of how I got to the leadership cohort. So as same as Nancy, I just, um, Daniel invited me and I just literally came in just to like observe, um, which is like a nice um, welcoming because there's not a lot of pressure on you to, you know, immediately, you know, sign up for a project or lead a project. And I think that's what um, stands out with Barrio Alegria is that there, there are honest and realistic expectations for um, the leadership cohort. And so I wanted to um, talk about that, um, the expectations. So for the meetings, um, meetings we meet probably like every other Saturday um, from nine to 10. Um, so annually, it'll be about 18 to 20 meetings, um, but there will be meetings where we do training, such as public speaking or, um, you know, any type of professional development skills um, where we invite people over to, you know, do these trainings with us. Um, and those last about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, as for the attendance, um, we hope that you... Um, no more than three absences without an excuse. Um, we know things happen, especially during these times. Um, a lot of things happen. Um, and that's the good thing about Barrio is that they have like realistic expectations and we see people as humans first and like we don't put that pressure on to, you know, always be there um, as long as um, you're involved in some way, either physically or even through Zoom, we um, accept, we accept you. Um, as for lates or absences, um, it should be communicated to our coordinator, Fabiola, who um, tries to keep everyone together. Again, if you do miss um, some absences, um, um, it's okay. We're, like I said, like, things happen, but just so you know, like when we do meet together regularly,
regularly in these meetings. Um, it does help create a stronger bond within each other and help us, you know, uh, collaborate more, more, um, more well, as you could say. Um, and then as to the criteria for these projects, um, they're not, I guess you could say very like, um, hard expectations of what these projects should be. We, we're really open to what you have, um, which is where our uh, LDC members jump in and help you out with any project ideas that you have. Um, so we always have meetings where we brainstorm and then we give each other feedback of what we think would work, what doesn't work. And these projects can be um, community-based, something that serves the community, or it can be something that um, serves yourself. As Barrio, we, one of our mission statements is to um, really empower an individual so that they can take on any other task um, where they see themselves as a leader. And so, um, so yeah, so with the criteria isn't really like um, much expectations. This is where like we jump in and help, help each other out. Um, and so, so yeah, members guide one another when we brainstorm ideas of projects. And um, it's a safe space, which is what I love about Barrio's um, leadership cohort. Like um, if you go into any of our meetings, we're really open-minded. Um, we listen to each other um, and there is no judgment, you know, but, um, but yeah, it's okay if you um, don't have, if you want to join, it's okay if you don't have a, um, uh, project in mind where you can lead. You can also just participate and help out the other members. Um, I know like sometimes we need help with like setting up um, for events, you know. Um, I know Anthony, he helped me with one of my front page stories. Um, he helped me edit it and like give me any interview tips as he's like, you know, a reporter. So we use each other's strengths to like help each other out. And so, yeah, as I said, there isn't really strict criteria as how these projects should look like. Um, we usually um, come up with these criteria once we're in the meetings and give each other feedback of what these uh, projects should look like. Um, so yeah, and I think that's all for me. And I wanted to pass it on to Nadine, who they will talk about um, the application process and how you can join this wonderful um, leadership cohort. Hi there. Um, my name is Nadine. I have been part of the leadership cohort for quite a while. Um, I have to say that um, for me it has been a wonderful experience to be a part of the leadership cohort. I am, I have the distinction of being the oldest in terms of years member of the leadership cohort. Um, I'm really grateful to be included, to be welcomed into the leadership cohort, uh, and to be a part of engaging with all of the great folks that you just had the opportunity to meet, as well as some folks um, who have been past members of the leadership cohort. Uh, like, Aldam like Adami mentioned, I had great opportunity to meet a lot of people through the leadership cohort. Um, like Lewis, I have lived here most of my life. Um, he gives me a little bit too much credit for my project. My project is slowly evolving. It's going to be great when it gets to the end point. Um, but I do um, have started a storytelling circle uh, that many of the leadership members and some other Barrio folks and friends of mine outside of Barrio um, were good enough to attend earlier in December and their support uh, made a huge difference to the experience for myself and everyone that was there. Um, let's see. Um, so I am here to tell you a little bit about the application process for the leadership cohort. As Kaylee was just uh, mentioning, you know, there it is a safe space with a lot of open minds where we're allowed to be human. Uh, and there's 
expectations, but there's also flexibility in those expectations. Um, before I tell you where to find the application, I want you to know that we did our best to make the application simple yet meaningful. Or to put it another way, the application is a necessary tool and we hope that you will use it to communicate why it matters to you to be a part of the leadership development cohort. I also want to be sure that you know it's not some kind of a, don't be intimidated. It's not a test with trick questions to intentionally trip you up or confuse you. Uh, and while we want you to give it your best shot to complete the application, you're not gonna be losing any kind of points for spelling or grammar or things like that. So be comfortable and feel free to express yourself. That's the most important part. Beyond that, other important things that you need to know is where you can find the application. The bilingual application can found, be found at the Barrio website which is www.barrioalegria.com. So once you find your way to the application, I also want you to know where to reach out if you need any help in completing the application. If you're not clear about something in the application, not clear about anything, have a question or multiple questions, don't hesitate, hesitate to reach out to Fabiola who I have said is fabulosa um, because she has been a huge help to me in my own experience with the leadership cohort and in getting my project off the ground. So just reach out to her because she's there. She's very patient. She's very understanding. And she just gently keeps you moving in the right direction to get things done. Um, her email is barriokeep, all one word, at gmail.com. Important to know when the application is due. The application is due by January 10th. So that's a few weeks out. And again, it's not a complicated application. The most important thing is why you want to be a part of the leadership cohort. Uh, finally, I want you to know how we choose. There are currently five open slots for the leadership development cohort. So as the current L leadership cohort members review the applications, we're going to be considering what your expectations are and how they match up with the purpose of the leadership cohort, how well you understand the expectations of the leadership cohort and of your what would be your fellow members, and your ability to fulfill those expectations. After we have reviewed all of those applications, we as a group will come together and talk about the applications that we received and we'll consider those same criteria, what your expectations are, what our expectations are, and how well they match. And we will notify everyone who's applying sometime around January 16th. If you're not one of the five, we hope that you will be interested in having us hold your application on a waiting list. If you agree to be on the waiting list, then we would be reviewing your application if a spot opens up. Um, so I hope that if you have any interest whatsoever that you will be applying to be a part of the leadership development cohort. It is a really wonderful experience. I myself have to say that I have had various leadership roles in my life, but I never really owned my own um, place as a leader. I never really saw myself as a leader, even though I've stepped into those roles from time to time. And through my experience with Barrio and the leadership cohort, in addition to making um, relationship with wonderful people in the community, um, people who care about and are committed to and see the see what's here in this community, um, see the good side and the possibility and are part of making that possibility blossom um, is a really exciting experience. Um, but it, at the same time, in addition to that exciting experience and the positive experience of being in community with the people who are part of Barrio and part of the leadership development cohort, uh, there is also the opportunity to 
evolve into, grow into, um, come to a place of owning the leadership capabilities that you have to offer in the community. That's all I've got for you at the moment. And if there's any questions, now is an opportunity for questions. We want to take the time to thank United Way, who is a partial funder of the leadership cohort. They helped us so much in moving towards our goal. I hope you learned a lot from this session. But there you have it, folks. The, El the Barrio Leadership Cohort is happy to close 2020 and is looking forward to 2021. Feel free to unmute and ask any questions you may have. I have one question. Um, my name is Kim Rivera. I work for Neighborhood Housing Services. Um, and I, I had this on my calendar starting at noon, so I only came in a little late. I'm sorry, I didn't get to hear everybody, but it sounds like a truly amazing opportunity um, for training and um, net, um, relationship building in the community. I was wondering if there's a minimum age limit for people who are applying. So like what's the youngest you would consider somebody for the program? Daniel, I think you're best to answer that question. Good morning, everyone. Uh, um, good morning. I think that um, we as a group have not made that, um, not made that decision yet. We haven't had that discussion. Um, so perhaps um, we would be willing to consider um, anybody right now who's in high school. I think that the youngest person, well, we have Fabiola who is um, uh, coordinating the, the group uh, and Fabiola is you know, a recent high school graduate. Um, but I, I think that um, we would have to make that decision uh, as a group. Um, so maybe, so yeah, I, I don't think I have the answer to that question, but um, we can post, uh, you know, the answer as soon as we decide at the beginning of the new year, unless anybody wants to chime in. I don't know, the, the process that we have is pretty democratic. So it was pretty interesting that Fabiola said Daniel, because I, I will say, all right, what does the group say? <laughs> Yeah, and the person I was thinking of um, maybe inviting to consider this is is a high school senior. Okay. Yeah, so it's not, uh, she's not super young. Yeah, no, I think that um, uh, as long as, uh, as long as they can meet the requirements that uh, Kaylee was talking about, which is, you know, um, uh, commit to the meetings uh, that happen, I think that we have decided I, 28 next year, 28 meetings. Am I right, Kaylee? Mm -hmm. Is that right? 28 meetings? There's 18 to 20 meetings. Oh, 18 to 20. Um, as long as the, they can, they can um, commit to those, then it should be okay. Okay, thank you. I just wanna say, you guys did amazing. Um, the, the, the growth of, uh, of every single one of you uh, is very, very inspiring. Will you be putting the recording anywhere? I would love to hear the beginning part that I missed. Arlene? Yes, the recording will be out um, early next month um, and a newsletter will go out with the link. So if you are subscribed to our newsletter, which you can do on our website, you should get a newsletter and it will have the link for you. And then it'll be also on our social media after. Perfect, thank you. Any other questions, comments from even cohort members? How do we feel? I don't know. I, I would like to say that um, this presentation, hearing it in this format where we take turns and 
we talk about certain subjects is a really interesting and different way um, to sort of consume the projects that we've done because um, just the format itself, you know, just the Zoom meeting alone is, it, it feels, uh, you know, a Zoom meeting feels inorganic. We can't be in the same room together. And the energy that goes into these projects are much more, it's much more explosive and the rapid ignition of passion and skills and um, real purpose is something that I don't think translates to any sort of presentation. This is something that you just have to be a part of when you see somebody um, who has a vision that's coming into view, that's clearing up and they're running towards it. And it develops in ways that maybe even the leaders didn't expect. And certainly that the community doesn't expect uh, because we keep it quiet until it's time to execute our mission and then when we do um it's explosive so that's just a takeaway that i had i just wanted to say thank you so much for a great presentation you guys are amazing i know that uh public speaking especially in this format like um, anthony was saying is difficult when you're looking at little black boxes so I thought, you know, you guys did a, an amazing job and putting all this information together and being brave enough to share your story. So I can't wait to see what comes next in 2021 for you. Thank you. I uh, want to want to mention that um, Kate, you know things that people put in the chat box are, for example, um, Kaylee Robinson said, "Thank you so much for putting this presentation together. I learned so much." And Nancy and Xavier maybe made me tear up. I resonate so much. Um, this community you all have built sounds so inclusive and supportive. I will definitely be applying in the future. Thank you again. And one <clears throat> comment from Virginia Rush, who said, I turn, tu tuned in a little late, but really appreciated the speakers I did get to hear. I know a few of you, and I'm glad to put names to faces with the rest of you. Thank you. Very inspiring. Just so that you guys know. Also, Nora <clears throat> Elmar Suki um, sent a message saying, thank you uh presentations you all have been such powerful speakers just so that you all know um i did want to say i think uh, it's very important to know that the the amount of trust and the amount of courage that it took for um you guys to share your your personal stories cannot be understated um so thank you again for that. I want to just echo what Kaylee said. All right. I think that we. Um, in Barrio, believe in this Quaker, uh, in, in the Quaker uh, circle uh, method of just staying in, in silence until you know somebody breaks the silence. Um, so we still have two more minutes to go, unless anybody wants to break that silence. I guess I just want to say everyone did a really good job. Um, shout out to Nancy because I know it's hard to tell um, I guess your personal journeys um, so that yeah I'm proud of her for being brave enough to tell her story and yeah everyone did a really good job thank you Fabi for organizing this you're welcome I love working with you guys and you guys are like the best group ever you guys make my job so easy and it's not even a job at this point 
you just guys feel like my family. I'm just hosting like a family reunion every meeting. I'm sitting all the way in the attic and I just heard Arleni laughing all the way from the first floor. <laughs> I'm really excited to see what happens in the next year um, when things inevitably change and we can hit the ground running. Can I ask something about next year? Do you guys have any like previews or any ideas or themes that you're looking at? I know, I think Idalmi said something about using a theme every year or someone did. Um, is there any idea of what the theme will be for next year? Well, I know something that I'm gonna be doing next year and I don't know if it necessarily falls into a theme it falls into the theme that we've been doing uh, of literacy and telling stories. And it's gonna be training people, high school students, how to tell and share information uh, in a responsible, ethical, and meaningful way, mindful way. And so they're gonna be writing stories, taking photos, videos, audio, uh, making podcasts, using media to tell the truth which I think is uh, critical at this moment. That's really cool, thank you. But yeah, many of the things that may be happening next year is something we all still have to discuss, but we will be discussing soon. Um, for next year, some of the projects will be returning, like the River of Stories is going to continue on to next year. I believe the library project is going to be continue on, continuing on to next year. And writing a children's book is also going to be continuing on to next year. Can I ask an individual question for Nadine? Nadine, what a, what's your next step in your project? Oh, Arleni. <laughs> um, the next step is to having had um, the storytelling circle that we had in December, which was about um, family holiday traditions. I think my next step is to continue with storytelling circles uh, with a different theme, um, perhaps each month. Uh, and and just kind of be with that and see where it leads. Eventually, what I really want to do is, um, after engaging with some people around that for a while, is bring those people together to start working toward creating that book that Lewis talked about, um, which I've been talking about for a while, which hopefully will be sort of a a uh, sharing story workbook kind of thing that parents and, and young people can do together uh, that is about family history, cultural roots, but also um, vision and goals for young people's lives and kind of where they're going. So um, it's a very long-term project. Uh, I tend to think out there and then say, oh, wow, there's like all these things that have to happen to, to get to that. So, but for the time being, the immediate thing will be uh, more storytelling circles. And do you see those storytelling circles eventually coming to be in person or are they going to stay virtual? I think it would be really nice if they were in person. Um, I mean, I think it's wonderful that we have Zoom to, to be able to do things and, and meet together like this, but um, actually being with people in person. Who knows, Arlene, I might even bring soup to every storytelling circle. What do you think? I'm there. <laughs> I'm signing up. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I think that it is time. Uh, we have gone uh, three minutes over 12. So we should thank everyone. Uh, I want to thank, obviously, um, 
in the name of Barrio, um, I want to thank um, the, the cohort members, um, but Fabiola as well for putting together this presentation, organizing it, and doing an amazing job of leading the leaders, which is not um, a quite easy thing to do. Um, so thank you, everyone. Thank you for an amazing 2020. Um, you went above and beyond everything that was thrown at you. Um, so you have uh, me as a person who's uh, applauding and definitely loving everything that you guys are doing. Um, and I look forward to seeing uh, what you produce and, and what you create and what you change in 2021. Um, I think, do you have any last words, uh, Fabiola? No, I just want to thank everyone who joined us. And I really hope this is really informational for everyone. We worked very hard on trying to give you the best information and I hope it paid off. All right, so thank you everyone. And now we can go back to our Saturday. I hope to see everyone of you soon. Bye, see ya. Bye, Bye. thanks. Bye. Take care, stay safe.